many minutes do I got? 27 minutes? Fucking eight. Alright, whatever. Um, yeah. So, hey guys. Um, yeah. I, I was just thinking about a lot of stuff and, and worried about things and got myself uh, into anxiety. Or I can't even see what's going on. I, I just have like anxiety now because. Uh, some things popping up in my feed about domestic violence and stuff and, and it just reminds me of my own situation and how I got out alive honestly it's been more than one time that this person tried to take my life and threatened to kill me and every time he got arrested it wasn't like I mean, this just goes on for years and years before I was married to him. Um, <laughs> and I'm thinking, I, I just still, I still blame myself for this because I stayed and I stayed and I stayed and then I had a child with him. Like, you know, I'm so angry at myself for, um, for bringing my son into the world, which I love dearly. I love him dearly and I feel so bad for bringing him into the world like this. Like I knew better, I knew, I knew that I shouldn't have any more kids with him. I had one already. And when I had my daughter, I wasn't quite alert to the abuse. It was newer, it was, you know, recently in our relationship, let's say, uh, three years, I think, in So she was born in 2005, and I got with him in 2000, and, oh, okay, okay. Or one, so I got with him in 2001, and I had her in um, 2005, right? So that's four years in. Um, okay, fine, I had, I had, I had her, all right, fine, but, um, but, um, I, then when I had my son, it was way later down the road, and that, that's, like, after the abuse started, and, um, so, really, I, I, there's so much guilt, I carry with me I, there's so much blame and and it's just it just brings me down you know and um and when my son was oh when I had my son I had the hardest time being pregnant because um um, because abuse was amping up. For some reason, abusers, uh, get worse when you're pregnant, it seems. Like, you know, because they don't want any attention on anybody else. And they know you're going to take your attention directed onto the child. And that's what was happening. So, you know, this is where he pushed me into the, um, kicked me into the, the, the dining table. Why do people think this is a, a marathon running, freaking, a marathon racing uh, bike lanes here? These aren't bike lanes. It's really ridiculous. Can you get out of this? I should film this. Film it. Look. Look at these freaking assholes. It's like, do, do you see a bike lane anywhere? Do you see a bike lane? No. Okay. Get out of the way of the street. Anyways, okay, so so yeah, I I knew about this, and I still this is why this is a sickness for the victims here. Not only is the, the abuser sick in the head, the the victims are sick in the head. <laughs> but there's so many women that die. Because they're defending the abuser and they keep them. Man, it just fucking infuriates me. 
to know so many women that are like me and have been raised that way, you know, because we're mo most of the women that stay in these relationships have been raised to be a certain way and to take certain things. So I, I can relate to this, but, and it gets me so angry that these people had no way out and they end up dying and it's just fucking, oh, it just gets me so mad because so many times these people that kill people eventually they were arrested for domestic violence and other instances and other crimes and nobody holds them accountable it's like they're they're arrested and then they expect the victim to go all out and prosecute them themselves almost like oh are you serious most victims are scared and they don't want to even go through with charges for the most part there there's actually laws that they they have a law in Florida. Let's say, for instance, um, if you call if someone calls the cops or you call the cops on somebody abusing you, um, and uh, the policeman uh, like you try to drop it or you try to uh, protect the abuser, and the policeman notices you have bruises or something on you, then they will charge them themselves. Like it's not up to you the person that called or the victim it's up to the police to do it so in florida that's what happened with my, me on my case okay so my <clears throat> man i don't know what this is coming uh, my ex um you know we had we had a big big situation going on in my place uh and with my two kids I'm just so pissed off at the whole system and how these people get away with it. And they keep on going. They keep on thriving. And they keep on getting that money. And they keep on growing, going to the top. And I'm just tired of it. This is the year of fucking no more bullshit. You know? So, so, uh, so, you know, the policemen were, were very, very helpful towards me, but they, and, and I was telling them, hey, I don't want to put him in jail, you know, it's, it wasn't a big deal, it wasn't a big deal, and, um, and then they, 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 they took pictures of my face, because my face was already bruising from the night before, for some reason, they came the day after the event, you know, because it happened during nighttime, so they came in the daytime in the morning, and, um, so, so they um they ended up coming and they noticed my bruises. They took pictures of me and everything and documented it and um, locked them up. And I was disapproving of that. I bailed them out of jail and everything because I was afraid. And and this is my fault that I did that. But yet we have this problem where um, the abusers' victims have an illness. You know, they're trying to get this in the DSM or whatever. You know, like the, the narcissistic abuse syndrome or, you know, something like that. Call it. Call it. It's really like, it's what it really is is a trauma bond. But connected with that is like PTSD, depression, anxiety, all that lumped into one. So, so a lot of professionals now, they want to, um, they want to bring out a new diagnosis. And I think that's a great idea because, you know, then it falls under everything that it, in, that it includes. It's not just one symptom of it. It's it's a bunch of things. And it's very debilitating and disabling because I received, uh, I had to go on disability because of my inability to work. Like, I can work, but I am, I can only do part-time work right now. Um... And, and even then, when I went back to work for part-time work, um, I was triggered over so many things that I, I would not even, like, know that that would happen to me. I, it just ended up happening. Like, uh, I was working at, um, uh, uh, like, a Goodwill place, and, um, we saw all kinds of things in there. You know, people leave it there as donations. And uh, uh, it depends on what area you're in. You can sell certain things. You can even sell firearms. You can sell uh, weaponry and, and, and all kinds of things. Like, I was surprised at how many things we accepted and sold. But 
anyway, but um, this one guy came up to me, um, and he took out a knife, not a knife, uh, it was a sword, and uh, <laughs> we actually sold it there, and it just was like sitting in the aisle by itself, a sword, like, you know what I'm saying? It was just so bizarre to have a weapon out in the open like that and we're selling it. But the area I'm in is more like an upscale area. So they don't have precautions against, like, you know, putting those things in under, um, like, the key or something. It was just out in the open. So the guy puts the uh, big sword onto the table <laughs> where I am, you know, to be cashiering, um, and automatically I went into a panic and um, uh, I, I started hyperventilating and uh, having a panic attack and I kind of like got dizzy and disoriented and dissociative like you know kind of feel not real anymore not real it's like you're watching yourself from the outside and then um um I had to leave the the, the, the the counter and go in the back room there and kind of like I turned into like a ball like I was sitting in, in, in the it's just so bizarre how you just turn like that and you can't get out of it you know like no matter what anyone does you can't really get out of it unless you practice uh, some DBT skills that I learned like you know mindfulness and kind of bringing yourself to some kind of attention of an object and like putting your hands and feeling it like I forgot what that's called but like you know you, you put your focus on it on something and you start describing it and you know you touch it and feel the texture things like that to keep your mind in the moment back in the moment instead of where you go I don't know where your mind goes but it goes <laughs> it goes when you're when you're um when you have uh, this uh, this attack come on to you, where, you know, a trigger. That's, okay, that's it's called a trigger, right? So, <coughs> <coughs> so, so now just talking about it is making me anxious and nervous. Um, so, sorry, um, I can't, I, I can't. All right, so that's what happened, and um, it took me a while to get out of it, and um, like a, like an hour maybe. It was bad, you know. I almost had to leave. I had to go in the back and kind of calm myself down, go in the bathroom, put water on my face, you know, things like that. Like put yourself back in the in the moment, and it wasn't easy to do, but. You know, like so. Th th that's why I can't work. That's not the only reason, but. That's why I'm on disability. I'm not like somebody who's gaming the system or something like that. Like I seriously have issues. Um, I end I end up dissociating and just kind of like blanking out. There, there's so many things that I experienced that um has led me to become disabled, which I'm embarrassed to say. Um, But, um, I try, you know, I still get up and I still try to do the best I can with what I'm given. And, um, you know, aim, not only that, I try to aim for, you know, the way that I actually live is kind of in a survival mode. And, uh, but I, I try to get myself to imagine and think of myself in the future like have more long-term goals and and other things like that so you know to get myself to encourage myself to that i don't have to be disabled the rest of my life you know like um, or in the state of like fear and and, uh, and near death experiences that I've had and um, when you have near death experiences and, and abuse uh, you don't live like a normal person anymore you, you kind of 
kind of have a part of you taken from you by them, you know, by the abusers, and it takes a long time to build it back up and, and get out of survival mode, because people that are successful and happy in life and, you know, easier to, to manage things in life are people that are living, uh, you know, their best life or whatever they say they, they are in a um state of you know their 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 survival is not in jeopardy and um they are not you know what i'm saying like they don't have this fear of of, of something's gonna happen to them any minute or whatever this is that i have carrying with, that i have to carry with me forever it seems because of what happened to me so they don't have that worry in the back of their mind all those needs are met all those needs are met and that's how you're able to become successful and do anything in life beyond surviving and just you know have a minimal job and go home and sleep and get up and work and go home and sleep that's what a lot of people are like in america or i don't know other countries but i know in america a lot of people are in that state of survival they're not living anything and it's extremely depressing to hear about all these other people that are living their best life and you know like i wonder i always imagine myself doing something extending myself beyond i didn't know that was a part beyond you know this 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 flight or fight mode that i live in and uh i imagine myself getting to that point of actualizing my life and and repairing myself but it's not easy <laughs> and uh, many people are living with the secret this is what I call the secret because a lot of us are like that we are we are scared people out in the open here knowing about what predators are like and what you know you know we are aware of people that are predatory like people that don't that haven't experienced trauma and have like a good stable upbringing and a good family system they don't understand like they are they are able to go out and explore in life we on the other hand we're more like okay well, i gotta watch my back every day you know and, and and what else can you go by beyond beyond that you can't really go anywhere else like, you stay in that state for a long time, you get comfortable there, and if you don't really work on yourself uh, as much as you can, uh, you could just stay there forever, and you end up just living, you know, minimal lives, and that's what we are, and uh, we end up being the servers to the people that have their lives together, and not only just the rich people, just people in general that don't have traumatic events in their life or uh, upbringing. So, unfortunately, the system set up that way that people like us, uh, it's hard for us to get help and all of that and, and be acknowledged because they don't want the system to change. They like it that way and they benefit and they profit off of us. So, you know, people say, oh, you should get help. You, you should do this and that. Yeah, well, you know what? I've gotten help. I've been in partial hospitalization programs. I've been in therapy counseling, uh, group counseling, uh, you know, online counseling, everything. I mean, it does help. Don't get me wrong. It depends on the person that's administering the uh, classes or whatever. It depends. And also depends on how much money you got or how, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, that's, if you get Med Medicaid or some kind of Medicare, you're not going to get as good care as somebody that has a, a paid for insurance or they pay out of pocket it just doesn't happen and the quality goes down the less money you have right but the system is 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 is, is good that way like you know the people that don't have these traumatic problems um benefit they benefit from our pain the people you know lower end or you know not lower end but you know what i just said um, and I have a feeling 
that's never going to change. It's getting worse now, especially with Republicans. Republicans really don't care about uh, the everyday citizen. So, <laughs> yeah, that's what you're voting when you're voting Republicans. That means you got your shit together, you never experienced trauma or setbacks, and you're just riding high on the money train, and you're taking advantage of people. You know, um, a lot of people, they don't have any qualms about uh, profiting off of others' pain and things like that. So that's what we're dealing with, this country. I can't speak for all countries, but that's, way, that's the way this country runs. And this country gotta run because this country is built on on um, hard work and uh, basically mostly hard work by those that are traumatized or less better off or minorities. And, you know, they pay us very little, the minimal. They treat us like shit and lower than, but you know, they don't have any compassion or empathy. I don't believe that. I don't like Republicans. I'm pretty sure that's the kind of uh, personality most of them have uh, that I've seen. So, yeah. So, uh, Trump is amplifying that by big, big time. And not only that, he's making it okay to disrespect people. Like, before, you know, people didn't like people, but they didn't come out and say it to your face. Now, it's like, okay, all's game now. Like, really? So, we're going to be worsely re disrespected and um the 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 wealth gap is is getting bigger and all that so yeah this is this is bad guys this is bad and uh if you vote a democrat in at least at least it'll it'll it'll, it'll attempt to level the playing ground for everyone else you know because there's a lot of us, we didn't ask to be born, okay? We didn't ask to be born into poverty, into um, whatever. Nobody did. Nobody did. I, I think humanity is, is what's lacking in this country now. It's, it's gotten worse. I mean, it's never been really a priority. You know, United States is, 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 is you know, big money and big things and big places big 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 everything is big and better bigger and better you know what I'm saying that's the motto really here and um anyway about that rant so uh, how much minutes I got here what is this no, not much like five minutes yeah so we're gonna get more and more narcissists. We're gonna get more and more abusers. Co covert abusers, overt abusers. I mean, they're everywhere, you know? They're all trying to get to that American dream, but the only ones that really live the American dream is, is the ones that are already born into it, you know? And they got the skills, they got the, the genes, they got, they got priority, they got seniority. And I understand that. It doesn't make me happy about it. <laughs> it does not make me not want to fight against it. Because there's a lot of people that are dying. And, um... And, um... In, bad, in horrible ways and suffering. I don't... Why do we have to suffer just because we were born? Nobody chose to be born. If I chose to be born, I definitely wouldn't have been born in my situation. I mean, that's that's common sense. I don't think anybody would have. So, yeah. I mean, come on. Humanity has been severely compromised. I'm scared. I'm very scared with the leadership we have right now. And if he wins, which I really think he will win, because he don't play fair. He plays dirty. And all the people that follow him play, they're used to playing dirty. And they don't mind who they got to step on. They don't mind. So, a cheat and whatever. They're already cheating with the post office situation, right? I mean, come on. Uh, make sure you vote, please, and don't vote for Trump. Please, 
vote for at least vote. I don't care if you don't like Democrats, but you need to level the playing ground for us. This is becoming um, unmanageable. Like, it's unfair, unbalanced. You have to have balance in life. You know? And if you don't, somehow you're going to re regret it. Somehow it'll, it'll affect you in some way along the line. I, I believe so. I hope so. Because you can't get away with this anymore. We're not going to stay silent. So you know what? I'm grateful for every day that I'm alive. Because I could have been dead by now. I should have been dead actually. But I'm thinking my ex narc is so sadistic that he wanted to make me feel like I was going to die but he was going to keep me alive just so I could suffer and I see it now that and he wants to take my kids more more knowing that he knows that I love my kids deeply and I'm going to suffer and sometimes people want other people to suffer rather than kill them and some people just kill them pets you know but it's sadistic abuse in my opinion gotten to, it's gotten, it's getting to, no, I'm sorry, but this is going too far now. I, I just, I, I prefer sleeping, but these days I haven't been sleeping well. I've been like having bad nightmares and just, right when I get to sleep, when I barely have any sleep as it is, but right when I get to sleep, I have to have a nightmare to ruin it all anyway. <laughs> really. But anyway, that's all I'm going to say for now because I am tired. Um, and the time's going to run out. So, in a minute now. Thank you for listening. I hope everyone uh, is listening.